wherever you go in the Catskills, you could look down and imagine glaciers below you, or you can walk at the bottom of a valley and look up and see 50 or 60 feet of Ice Age lake water rising above you. You can stand in a valley and look north, and in your mind's eye, you can witness, I like to use the word witness, a glacier coming down to, oh, the Schoharie Creek Valley or the Susquehanna Creek Valley. And in your mind's eye, you can see a glacier that actually had been there. It is the most incredible experience. Uh, keep reading our stuff. You'll get better and better at it. And so, too, I hope will your listeners. Inside the line, the Catskills. Welcome everyone to Inside the Line, the Catskills. Uh, this is episode 11, a very special episode with Dr. Titus, with the Catskill geologist. I look up to his stuff all the time. I have his books right here. Uh, say hello, Dr. Titus. Hi, folks. He's actually here with his wife, uh, Johanna. Johanna, you can say hi as well. She is... Uh... Uh, just left the room, Johanna. Maybe I could talk her into saying something to your folks, but she's not terribly interested in participating tonight. Hey, that's okay. Um, if she wants to step in at any time, yeah. go right ahead. I'm glad to have uh, Dr. Titus. I, I've read, I'm pretty sure, three out of four books, mostly about the glaciers and the class skills. I'm fascinated with glaciers. Apparently, Dr. Titus is, and we're going to talk about the glaciers and the cat skills tonight. It's going to be a great time. Uh, you're going to learn a lot because I've learned a lot from his books. So check out all of his books. We'll talk about that later, but uh, we're ready to go. So uh, I'd like to thank sponsor Scenic Route or Route Guiding. Um, if you're ready to hit the trails, make sure you take the Scenic Route. Our guides are here to help you with goals, big or small. Check out the Scenic Route Guiding and Gear Rentals on Instagram and Facebook for more information. I didn't know if she was serious for this, but uh, she said, take 10% off if you mention the podcast. Use the code Mountain Lion. Um, Sarah and I are big on Mountain Lion. So um, uh, I'd like to thank monthly subscribers, Katrina Weinig, Darren White, and John Comiskey for donating to the show. And uh, we got uh, Magda, I think that's how she says her name, um, for buying us two coffees tonight. So thank you very much, guys. We really appreciate it. Once again, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but at a certain time when we when we meet the quota of the year, I'm going to start donating the coffees to other organizations in the Catskills. So that'll be really cool. Maybe New York, New Jersey Trail Conference, uh, whatever. Name some suggestions and I'll do that. Dr. Titus, are you having anything to drink tonight to ease the, uh, make it softer? I don't need anything. Uh, at all <laughs> okay because some of some of my my friends that i've interviewed needed uh because they thought this would be a, a crazy interview so they needed something to drink nope i'm fine you and i can just talk oh i'm i'm so excited i'm so excited so um have you uh been on any previous hikes lately i beg pardon have you uh been on any like previous hikes lately to check out some stuff Oh, uh, well, uh, about a month ago, I took a hike for the Mountaintop Historical Society. We went out to the Rim Trail overlooking Catterskill Clove, and we looked at some landscape that was painted by uh, Hudson River School artist Sanford Robinson Gifford, and absolutely gorgeous paintings that he did there and of landscapes that were shaped by the glacier that came up Catterskill uh, clove. Once again, we'll be talking about that later, which is awesome. Um, a lot of people think that the glaciers flowed down the mountains, but yeah. they actually didn't. So that's once again, well, you got to read. Them did. Some of them did. You have to read next week's article. We're going to do the glaciers go down. <laughs> um, is that what is that going to be pressed on? Uh, that'll be in the Mountain Eagle. I think you're referring to the article that came out in this issue of the Mountain Eagle. And we talked about the glaciers moving up Catterskill Clove. And next week, we're going to talk about glaciers moving down North Point. Excellent. So, so cool. See, this is, this is why, check out his books. Um, you will learn so much from his stuff. I have learned so much. 
stuff. And we're going to talk about some of that uh, stuff about the geology and glacial activity in the Catskills tonight. And I'm so excited. I, I'm a big glacier fan. So, so in Catskill news, a um, portion of the Devil's Path at Devil's uh, Tombstone Campground uh, received a makeover this month, thanks to the team at Tahas Trails. The crew fulfilled the DUC's vision. The staircase used to be a wood staircase and is now a stone staircase, which is absolutely phenomenal job. It was once a hazard. I don't know if you, how long you've been up there, Dr. Titus, but it was once a, a, a rough way to get up the start of the trail. It's been a long time since I've taken that trail. I'll have to take you up there because there's actually been new, uh, some recent activity with landslides up there, little, little tiny ones. Right, right, right. That's they a did a good job at Catterskill Falls. Uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing what they did there. Exactly. They've they've done some amazing job around the uh, the Catskills, and I'm looking. I'm also looking forward to it. Also, the John Rob Lean to Graffiti guy was caught, which is good. He will be going to trial or going to court in a little bit. I know that uh, a lot of people were wondering about that, and he tried to make it better by going driving up one of the ski trails on hunter mountain and he got caught by the rangers which i have no clue why he would do that but hmm. whatever for the the instagram correct <laughs> right um so usually um on on inside the lines we go into some catskill history but not tonight tonight is all about catskill history definitely the geology and the catskills is a huge thing explains once again um dr titus's books explains a lot in the catskills and it gets you involved more and even more in the catskills it's gotten me hooked on the glacial activity and you know i love glacial activity you know i don't know if a lot of people have been around the world and been to places with glaciers i have i've been to uh up in western canada where they still have some glaciers and i'm fascinated by them johanna and i each of us have never seen a glacier Really? Yes. <laughs> oh, it's got to so. be on our list. We've written uh, two books about the ice age in our region, but none of us, neither of us, have ever seen a glacier. Well, then, excellent. So, I would suggest going up to Western Canada and going to the Anthabasca Glacier, and you can actually touch it. Yeah. Yeah. I was. I went up there, and uh, we didn't get to touch it, but we also followed precautions. It said, "Don't go beyond this point unless you are." like skilled or something, but we had our micro spikes, we had our crampons, so we could have went up to it, but we just didn't decide to. But my wife and I have plans to go up more into the Canadian Rockies and actually stay in the huts that are probably around 300 feet away from the glaciers, which is fantastic. I'm glad you did that. Yeah. So um, once again, let's uh, get to the topic of the night, um, Dr. Titus and glaciers in the Catskills. So welcome, Dr. Titus. How are you doing tonight? I'm just fine. Looking forward to this. I'd so 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 am I, and hopefully so are we. Once again, I'm fascinated with glaciers. I'm fascinated with the uh, geology in the Catskills. So hopefully I'll explain some stuff tonight. And once again, check out his books. Uh, he's got four books, Hudson Valley, Ice Age, Catskills Geological Guide, Geological Guide, and the Catskills in the Ice Age. There's another one. What's the other one? Oh, uh, the other one is an anthology of uh, articles that were printed. It's called The Other Side of Time. And I should caution your readers, uh, most of our books are in the second, third, even fourth editions. So they should make sure they are getting the latest edition of each of those books. Correct. I, I still have to get the third edition of the Catskills and the Ice Age? Yes. Yes. I got to get that. But once again, Dr. Titus, so uh, tell us uh, about your background, you know, um, education, uh, where you've lived and places visited. Well, uh, Stash, I've, since I was about five years old, I've been fascinated by geology, uh, more paleontology than anything else. I pursued a degree at Rutgers University in geology and then went on to Boston University for a master's and PhD. I spent 44 years teaching at the college level. <laughs> and three years ago, uh, both my wife and I uh, retired. My wife was a professor at Dutchess Community College. She's a biologist by training. We live uh, in Greenville. And from the front porch of our house, we can look up and see Wyndham High Peak. So we're, we're Catskill people. 
Excellent. How, how long have you uh, lived in the Catskills? Well, I moved uh, to teach up here in 1974. Oh, wow. That yeah. You're mm-hmm. definitely a local. I think I think I almost qualify. <laughs> Both of us are from New Jersey. I don't know if you're ever allowed to actually stop being a New Jersey person. Do you have New York plates? Oh, yeah, <laughs> indeed. Okay, so then you won't be judged because everybody judges the New the New Jersey plates up here in the Catskills. Okay, now we don't have New Jersey plates. That's that's for sure. Good people will love you then. Um, so you said you published four books. Can you uh, uh, name those books so people purchase them later? Well, I the one that's pertinent to this show is the uh, the Catskills in the Ice Age. The Catskills: A Geologic Guide. Is probably the best book uh, if you've never read any of our works. Uh, that's the introductory geology of the cat skills. I think uh, our best effort, Johanna and I worked very well on this, was our uh, Hudson Valley in the Ice Age uh, book. And uh, then the, uh, the fourth one is uh, people that have a hard time finding The Other Side of Time has about 40 uh, old articles reprinted in it. So it doesn't have a single theme. It's an anthology of work, mostly that I did. Uh, when does those uh, the anthology uh, date back to? Oh, golly, it's been uh, early in this century, about 2005, I think. I'd have to go look myself. That's, that's incredible. So stuff so much has changed ever since 2005. That's almost 20 years. <laughs> yeah. Insane. Yeah. You also published to the Purple Mountain Plus and the Black Dome Press, correct? Right. Those books are all either by Purple Mountain or Black Dome with these local uh, publishers. Uh, do you also you also do do you do weekly or monthly to the Eagle Mountain Press? Correct. Yes, uh, we are very active as uh, we can be called journalists. We can be called columnists. The centerpiece is every single week we publish a column uh, in the Mountain Eagle. Uh, newspaper, which is uh, distributed throughout the uh, central Catskills. We uh, continue to write columns for Catskill Life magazine, which is no longer published as a hard copy, but as a online magazine. And we're in every issue of that. We uh, sometimes, uh, well, we're frequently in a magazine called Upstate Life magazine, which is published by the Oneonta Daily Star. Every once in a while, across the river, we publish in a newspaper called the Columbia Paper. And we're very proud to be associated. And we've been in most issues of Tri-County Historical Views, which is a scholarly uh, uh, magazine about the history of the Catskill region. So we're quite busy. We have written over a thousand articles, written and published over a thousand articles Oh my God, that is, that is that's amazing! I didn't know that. <laughs> Especially if you hated writing papers when you were in school. <laughs> yeah, correct. Um, so, like you, you said you published to the Daily Star, or they, they, that's my local town. The uh, uh, Oneonta Daily Star has a magazine version that comes out five or six times a year called Upstate Life. They give it away free wherever they sell the Daily Star. And we've been in that for over the last three years, I think, something like that, three, four years. Oh, wow. I'll have to check that out. I've never heard of that. I've lived in Oneon almost all my life. Oh, you missed us. Oh, yeah, a yeah. Good, a lot of good articles you've missed. Correct. Especially about the West End. Uh, what what uh, valley did you talk about that it was a, a glacial uh, moraine? Uh, the West Oneon is actually a glacial, an ice age delta. Uh, water flowed out of the hills uh, into a lake, which covered, uh, Oneonta was entirely covered by a lake, which would remind you of Lake Oxego up at Cooperstown. And uh, water flowing into that lake, carried sediment, deposited a delta. And there's actually three deltas. One delta, which makes up West Oneonta, and two combined deltas, which make up Center City Oneonta. The next time you're driving through Oneonta, notice how flat uh, Center City is. You're driving on the top of an Ice Age Delta. Oh, wow. The funny thing is, is I live right over by the side of all the the car dealerships. Uh Uh-huh. 
And I've always wondered that one drop off that leads over to the side of where like all the uh, industries are. Yes, I think that's the edge of a delta. The front of a delta is very steep. The time you're there, notice that the top is flat and then you drop down a steep slope. That's the front of the delta. It, it's a wonderful thing. Everywhere you go in the Catskills, if you know your Ice Age geology, you can identify features. You can see that the Ice Age sculpted the landscape where we all live. I like to say I can never go anywhere in the Catskills without looking in one direction or another and pointing to an Ice Age feature and an, an important one. Exactly. Oh, my God. That, that's the way I think at, at all times. You should ask my wife when we hike how many times <laughs> I look at, at, a, at a rock. A big, huge glacial erratic. Yeah, that's right. And I, and I say, look at that glacial erratic. And she's just staring at me. <laughs> and don't you feel smart being able to say that? Exactly. And then, you know, she's just like looking at me like, what are you talking about? I'm like, you don't understand. <laughs> so um, what brought you to the Catskills for your, for your studies? Well, um, I came here in 1974 and began teaching at Hartwood College. And uh, it was only natural for me to become interested in the regional uh, geology. Actually, uh, at that time, I was doing serious scientific research up in something called the Black River Valley, up towards Watertown. And so it wasn't until uh, 1991 or 1990 when Catskill Life magazine came out for the first time. And I started reading the issues as they came out. And it occurred to me, maybe they would enjoy having an article about the geology of the Catskills. And so I approached them and I, and I, I sent them in for, I wrote four short articles as samples of my, the work that I could do and I was interested in doing. I rather expected that I would get a postcard back from them saying thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> but instead, I got a phone call and an invitation to have lunch with them. I have since found that when they invite you to lunch, that's a very good sign. <laughs> Excellent. And so then I started writing uh, quarterly articles in Catskill Life magazine about the geology and especially the Ice Age geology of the Catskill Mountains. What drew me to the Ice Age, and I had never any training in the Ice Age, it was the imagery that the Ice Age conjures up. Wherever you go in the Catskills, you could look down and imagine glaciers below you, or you can walk at the bottom of a valley and look up and see 50 or 60 feet of Ice Age lake water rising above you. You can stand in the valley and look north, and in your mind's eye, you can witness, I like to use the word witness, a glacier coming down to, oh, the Schoharie Creek Valley or the Susquehanna Creek Valley. And in your mind's eye, you can see a glacier that actually had been there. It is the most incredible experience. Uh, keep reading our stuff. You'll get better and better at it. And so too, I hope, will your listeners. I, I agree. Um, his books are undescribable with his views and images of where the glaciers were and what they did. I, I love reading your stuff. Once again, you know, just imagine for the listeners right now, imagine standing once once again at the top of a you know west kill mountain and seeing that big cirque mm -hmm. the glacier flowed down that cirque correct that is a downhill flowing glacier right there but if you look in the distance uh there's a beautiful ledge at the top of uh, the trail at west kill mountain i bet a lot of your listeners have been up there you stand up there and you look down and you see an alpine glacier moving down that slope but then you look in the far distance, all the way down to the village of Westkill itself, and you see a valley glacier coming from the north, coming down past Route 42, turning east and coming towards you. So you get to, in your mind's eye, stand upon an alpine glacier that's going downhill and gazing out in the distance five miles away and seeing a valley glacier coming towards you. What an experience that is. And we, all of us have uh, the mind's eye, the human imagination to conjure up those images and to see, I like to say witness or actually see what really happened in places like West Kill Valley. 
you never get tired of it. I can agree with that. You know, I look at those, those cirques all the time. And I imagine what you said, the glaciers, what they did to create that cirque. There's so many amazing cirques around the, uh, the Catskills that you cannot forget, like the, the West Kill Cirque. We'll have an article in next week's Mountain Eagle about the North Point Cirque. And awesome. uh, we'll have a description of what you would have seen had you stood, stood at the shore of North Lake during the Ice Age. So I think you're going to enjoy that article. Oh, I'm looking so forward to it. So next question. Um, This kind of bring us to, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen The Office, the TV show. This is a quote from that. Explain to us, uh, as if I was five, the glacial action in the Catskills. Uh, Where did it come from? How did it do things to that? Um, A lot of us, well, a lot of us that are, are looked into this know that the the Catskill Mountains were actually mountains. They're a plateau that it's dissected, correct? No, I I take the real, uh, I'm very opposed to that idea. The Catskill Mountains are mountains. And uh, if you are fully aware of the definition of a dissected plateau, I think you'll agree with me that they ain't. (laughs) And uh, Catskill Mountains are the Catskill Mountains not the Catskill dissected plateau. The writer in me rebels against that second phrase. It's ugly language. The Catskill Mountains conjure up images of Rip Van Winkle. The Catskill dissected plateau is that. <laughs> Conjures up no decent image whatsoever. Don't get me started. <laughs> okay. Catch me in a bar late at night and bring up that phrase and watch what happens. Oh, oh, I'm going to have to do that then because I want to hear it. No. (laughs) Now, I I get the gist of your question, though, Stash, and let me begin to answer it. Uh, The Ice Age began, oh, about uh, 28,000 years ago when in Labrador it snowed a lot. Vast, enormous quantities of snow poured, I think, cascaded out of the sky, and the snow piled up, and it's got so thick that it hardened into ice. And when it was thick enough, it began flowing outwards, especially to the south. Had you been there in a satellite at that time or way up in the sky, you would have watched a glacier form in Labrador, spreading to the south, crossing the Adirondack Mountains, getting funneled into the Hudson River Valley, swelling down the Hudson River and then rising like uh, like a loaf of bread getting ready to be baked. And uh, it the glacier didn't s- stop until it got to Long Island. It was not a glacier so much as an ice sheet. And it rose, we think, to at least 4,000 feet in today's elevation. If you stand at the top of Slide Mountain, uh, at that moment in time, or in your mind's eye, you can turn 360 degrees and see the top of an ice sheet all around you. I like to do it at night when a full moon is shining down on the ice and there's a silvery sheen as the uh, moonlight reflects off of the glacier. If you've been to the top of Slide Mountain and you've stood at that mass of rock at the top, conjure up that memory and paste, cut and paste, a great top of an ice sheet. Turn it into Antarctica. And if you can do that, and you can, you're truly experiencing the peak, the absolute peak of the ice age. And then it all melted. And uh, by about 18,000 years ago, most of all of the ice had melted back. And then it got cold again. And this time... Uh, It snowed in Labrador and the snow spread out, but this time it never got to be the great ice sheet. Instead, the uh, ice flooded the Hudson Valley, rose up. Picture yourself at the Catskill Mountain House ledge, watching the glacier come down the valley below you and then swelling up to the very top of the Catskill Mountain House ledge and then crossing into the Catskills. 
Meanwhile, another mass of ice is moving west through the Mohawk River Valley and then turning south so it can flood into the Susquehanna River Valley and into the uh, Schoharie Creek Valley. This second phase of the Ice Age was mostly confined to the valleys in our region. Anytime you're at the bottom of the Schoharie Creek Valley, uh, pull over, pull off the road, get out, look to the north, and in your mind's eye, see a glacier coming down the Schoharie Creek Valley. Watch as it swells up, fills the entire valley, and then proceeds on to the south beyond where you are. Uh, what a remarkable uh, glaciation that was. And then it all melted. And then it happened again. The valleys flooded one more time. Then the, the climate warmed up again. Global warming occurred, only good global warming. And then it cooled down a little bit. And that last final phase is when the alpine glaciers dotted the high peaks of the Catskills. The best one to go to is uh, behind Overlook Mountain. The one at North Point is a wonderful one. The one at Westkill Valley is a very fine one. But there may be 20 other alpine glaciers uh, throughout the Catskills. If you know what to look at, uh, you're looking at those bowls where the, uh, the Alpine glacier formed. And the term that you use, and it's the right term, is cirque. A bowl-shaped structure is a cirque. Yep. Uh, I love seeing those cirques all over the place. Um, like, like you said, I, I fantasize about those cirques. Um, it's <laughs> just an amazing um, geological feature to see. And, you know, when you're down at Overlook, and you look, or not at Overlook, uh, Ashokan Reservoir, you can see all those cirques in the, the Moon Hall Valley. Mm -hmm. Absolutely phenomenal. What an area and what um, a diverse glacial activity. Because you said, you know, from the Catterskill area, the stuff flowed up and then around and down, correct? It flowed up Catterskill Creek. It got uh, to uh, below where Catterskill Falls were. And some of the ice turned north. And believe it or not. <laughs> Ice can flow north. Oh, maybe that'll make a good article for the Mountain Eagle. You might have just inspired an article. <laughs> it, uh, it flowed uh, over where Catterskill Falls is and into where South Lake is. Meanwhile, another glacier was flowing from the east to where North Lake is. Go to that peninsula between North and South Lake and look to the south. And in your mind's eye, watch as a glacier passes across Catterskill Falls, approaches into South Lake, and uh, advances right to where you're standing. Then turn around, look to the east, and see another glacier rising up over the mountain house ledge, moving towards you until it gets to North Lake and approaches. And where you're standing, those two glaciers ha have a train wreck. They collide with each other. It is the most bog mindling thing. You can stand and in your mind's eye, you can see two glaciers moving towards you. And right where you're standing, they collide. They can't hurt you because you are the mind's eye. <laughs> now, North Lake was scoured out by the one glacier and South Lake was scoured out by the others. Those lakes would not exist except for the Ice Age. And those two lakes are so important in the history of the Catskill Mountains, especially its tourist trade. Thank you, Ice Age. <laughs> Correct. I mean, like so many people don't realize, like when you're standing at North Point Mountain, that one glacier was flowing down the Hudson Valley and then another glacier was coming up to North Point Mountain and then hitting the, <laughs> the Hudson Valley. Unbelievable stuff, right? Right. right. And, and, and that's what I see after reading your books. I seriously, all those cirques, you know, um, the wagon wheel, uh, it fascinates me. Have you seen, seen the right, the wagon wheel? Absolutely, I have. You've been in it? Uh, I have not been in it. Yeah, uh, so it's no trespassing. Uh, I've I, seen it from um, uh, Tysteniuk. Is that how you yeah. say it? Oh, you have. Yes, you can do that. Yeah. 
unbelievable, um, fascinating. Once again, yeah, uh, his books explain this. Um, the Wagon Wheel by his books. We're not going to talk about that tonight. Maybe we'll have uh, Dr. Titus on here for like part one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> nine. <laughs> Let's hold it down there. <laughs> I'll be happy to come back. So. Definitely. Um, once again, just picture yourself on top of a peak and, and the glacial activity. Absolutely phenomenal. So the next question uh, brings me to one of my favorite aspects, geological aspects in the Catskills, glacial striations. Um, you can find these all over the, the Catskills. Um, where do you think your, your favorite spot of glacial striations are? Well, uh, not everybody knows what they are, so let's define them. A Good glacier call. is moving across a landscape, and the bottoms of glaciers are dirty. They pick up soil, they pick up gravel, they pick up cobbles, and they can pick up boulders. And they're real good at moving this stuff around. Imagine for a moment that a glacier is moving across bare bedrock and dragging a boulder with it. That boulder is going to be drug into the ground and it's going to scratch or striate uh, the bedrock. And uh, you won't know that until the ice age is over and the ice is melted away. And when it is done that, You'll look at the bedrock and you'll see long, straight, very straight scratches in the bedrock. They're called glacial striations. There's absolutely no other way of interpreting them except in terms of the movement of a glacier. Now, I'd like to take you to my favorite single most location to see striations, and that's the east shore of North Lake. Uh, I'd like you to park in the North Lake parking lot and at the north end of the North Lake parking lot and walk down to the shore of the lake. Soon you will see that that shore is composed of bedrock. You will see that the bedrock has been smoothed to a great extent by the glacier carrying a lot of sand with it. The glacier sanded that bedrock and turned it into a smooth surface. But the glacier also carried boulders across that surface and left striations in the shoreline rock oriented from the east and to the west. They record the Hudson Valley Glacier rising out of the Hudson Valley, pouring across the Wall of Manitou and heading west into the Catskills, carrying all sorts of sand and gravel and cobbles and boulders with it. Part, I should have brought something to drink. We <laughs> a little bit here. Now, uh, you can't miss it. Um, you know, another very good place to go see striations is the entrance to the meadow at the uh, mountaintop arboretum. Pull into the arboretum, park in the parking lot, walk across the driveway, and there's a gate that lets you into the north meadow. Uh, which is a lovely part of their grounds. That gate towers over exposed bedrock, and that exposed bedrock, just like I described at North Lake, was polished by the sand at the bottom of a moving glacier and then striated by the cobbles and boulders that were carried by that same same glacier. Where can we find the this arboretum for, for the... Oh, the, the mountaintop arboretum... Uh, you go up Route 23 through Catterskill Clove, and then you keep going until you get, I guess it's Tannersville. Yep. And you, you watch for the sign that says Arboretum, and you turn right, and you drive into Antiora Park. The Catskill Arboretum is part of Antiora Park. It's open to the public, and if you just find your way to Antiora Park, you will have almost no trouble at all stumbling across the arboretum. It's a nice place. I've got oh, a large number of trees, this species there. Uh, it's a public effort. The people of Antiora Park have created uh, the uh, arboretum. It's definitely worth the, the effort. Excellent. So yeah, go, go ahead. Um, you can see yeah. exposed bedrock uh, that yeah. shows the glacial, glacial striations. And the critical thing is for your, for your, to train your mind, to train your eye, uh, there was a time when you ne had never seen a striation. There was a time when I had never seen a striation. But once you've seen your first striations, you'll never forget them. Uh, you Correct. can't miss them. And just as you said, Stash, 
you see them all across the Catskills, everywhere you go. Uh, what we like to bring with us always is a compass. And when we're working an area uh, and it's important, we always take the compass measure of the striation and we put an arrow on our map. And when you got a couple dozen arrows, you've got a record of the Ice Age history of a vicinity. At North Lake, uh, we have found uh, several score, uh, probably 50 or 60 striations. We have 50 or 60 arrows on our map and we have a beautiful record of how the glaciers invaded North Lake Campground. And of course, there's lots of glacial erratics there as well. Once again, everybody, when you're, when you're standing at a viewpoint or at a spot where it's a flat rock, take a look below you. Mm -hmm. You can see drag marks. Um, some of them are straight. Some of them are very unique and curvy. Um, I know there's some on, uh, curvy ones are in Roman's nose, correct? Uh, I'm not sure I could take you to a curved one. Uh, oh, I think I know what you mean. Uh, there's a thing called chatter marks. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, chatter marks. <clears throat> Very interesting. When a boulder is being dragged by a, a glacier, two things are happening to the poor boulder. The weight of the ice is pressing down on it, but it's being also pushed from behind. Well, the weight holds the, glacier, the boulder in place until the push from behind gets so great that it leaps forward and smacks into the bedrock when it comes to the end of that leap. And then it's all repeated. The weight holds it down. The push from behind pushes from behind until it leaps forward. And each time it leaps forward, it creates what we call a chatter mark, which is a chevron-shaped fracture in the bedrock. And they're lined up. Uh, that's another thing. They're not nearly as common as uh, striations. But once you have a trained eye, once you know what to look for, you will see them scattered uh, all across the Catskills. And when you're taking people hiking and you can point these things out to people, it leaves such an impression upon them. They're, they're, ho! <laughs> they go, ho! <laughs> and, oh, yeah. Then you wave your arm and you point a few thousand feet up into the air and you say that was all ice. Exactly. Um, once you see, everybody thinks that those uh, marks were made by humans. When you're in fact looking at a glacier pushing right. a rock across that. You're right, right, right. And, and, and it's like, like I've, I've shown my wife that, I've shown my friends that. I'm just like, look at this right here. What do you think of this? <laughs> and, and they're just like, oh yeah, that's some you know, idiot back in the, the, <laughs> the early days, the 1900s made just a carving. I'm like, no, that was created by a rock 17, 14,000 years ago. Yep. Yep. yep, yep. And, and it's, it's fascinating. And once again, um, so um, check it out. Once again, you're standing at a, a viewpoint with a flat rock, look below you, check out the glacial sirations. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. And they've been there all of your life and you never looked for them. And so you never saw them. Exactly. And, you live in a place like, like I do, you never see them until you get to a, a place like the Catskills. Mm -hmm. So once again, we'll lead into my next question, glacial erratics. I am fascinated by glacial erratics, especially when I'm bushwhacking. I have found glacial erratics that are the size of like a boat, maybe even bigger. Yeah. Um, what can you say about, I mean, you've already almost explained that um, glaciers push the big rocks, a big rock will get caught by the glacier and pushed up. Can you explain anything else by glacial erratics, make it easier? Oh, there's lots of things. The, the most important thing I always try to say to people is that whenever you see a boulder in the Catskills, it is almost certainly a glacial erratic. It almost certainly was brought to where you see it by the movement of the ice. It can be as big as a two-car garage and heavy, but it was brought there by the glacier. Glaciers are good at moving things around. The key thing, and I wonder if you've ever seen it, the, most of the erratics in the Catskills are composed of Catskill bluestone, just regular uh, Catskill sandstone. They weren't carried very far. They might have been carried a, a city block, a mile, or maybe five miles, but not very far. If you have a trained eye, however, you can see some erratics which are composed of a rock called a gneiss. 
which is a metamorphic rock. And there's no such thing in native to the Catskills. This kind of rock, you would, uh, the nearest place you can get this kind of rock would be the Green Mountains of New England or the Adirondacks. And so when you find a rock in the Catskills that came from the Green Mountains or came from the Adirondacks, the only way it could have gotten to be where it is was carried by the glacier, which passed across those mountains and continued into the Catskills. And then when it melted, it left that rock behind. So you need to learn how to identify a nice, uh, a metamorphic rock. And once you've learned how to identify that kind of rock, you won't see them every day, but you might see them every other day when you're hiking in the Catskills. And you kneel down and you put your finger on it and you turn to the people you were with and you say, this came from the Green Mountains. And they're, they go, ha! <laughs> and they, they don't know if they want to believe you or not, but they can't come up with any other explanation. The rock is truly an erratic. It came from somewhere far away. Exactly. Um, you know, I've seen some, once again, uh, if, if you've hiked, uh, all the 3,500 peaks, one of the, the best glacial erratics that you'll never forget, top of Pe Pika Moose Mountain, right? Correct? Pika Moose. I don't know if I've ever been to the top. I am not a member of the 35ers. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, there is, uh, I forgot. I don't know if it's, it has a, a special name, but there is a, a boulder just sitting on right on the top of Pika Moose Mountain. Mm -hmm. um, shaped kind of like a, um, almost like an hourglass. No, I haven't seen that one. There's, there's no way it could have been brought there, you know, by, by the cascading waters or stuff like that. It was brought there by a glacier. Here's the one that everybody who's listening has been to. And that's Sunset Rock, north of North Lake. And uh, that's that place you uh, hike up the Blue Trail, you turn onto the Yellow Trail, and you get to the bottom of the Yellow Trail. And there is a thing that's just painted right on it. It says Sunset Rock. And from Sunset Rock, you have that fabulous view of where the Mountain House Hotel had once been. And you can see both North and South Lake and a little bit of Catterskill Clove. That is an absolutely wonderful glacial erratic, and it's probably the best known. The other one is Boulder Rock. Yeah. Uh, take the Blue Trail immediately south from the Mountain House Hotel site, veer off on the Yellow Trail, following the sign that says Boulder Rock this way. And Boulder Rock is perhaps one of the most picturesque erratics that you'll find almost anywhere. And Stash, the next time I'm, you're there, I want you to walk about 50 yards south of Boulder Rock and look for the glacial striations, look for the polish to the bedrock. And uh, that is an absolutely wonderful surface. And here's another thing I wonder if you've ever seen. Uh, have you ever seen pebbles and cobbles in the sandstone that have been beveled off by the passage of the ice? Are you talking about the stuff on like, uh, you know, Slide Mountain and uh, Sugarloaf? Well, the best place to see it is just south of Boulder Rock. Uh, another good place to see it is the Yellow Trail uh, heading towards Sunset Rock. I want you to walk along these trails, looking down at the bare sandstone until you see the cross section of a cobble buried in the sand. And the glacier, when it passed across it, sheared right into that cobble and cut off the top of it. Now, there's a lot of them south of Boulder Rock, and there are a fair number of them on the Yellow Trail on your way to Sunset Rock. I've actually found them at the very top of Catterskill Falls, which speaks to me of the ice that came up Catterskill Clove, turned to the north and passed across the top of Catterskill Falls. I stand at the top of the falls, I look into the sky and I see a glacier towering above me. It's a wonderful, wonderful experience. And there at my feet is the evidence um, so like, also I, I'm pretty sure once you walk below sunset rock, you can see that, um, the Stansone and the, um, uh, what is it called again? 
the the granite, right? Correct. Oh, uh, the Twilight Park conglomerate uh, pudding stone. I yes, the, the conglomerate. Yes, you can. So if you if you ever once again the, the the listeners, if you ever walk below Sunset Rock, you go below Sunset Rock, you can see the conglomerate rock. It looks basically like like concrete that was put together. It's composed of uh, lithified, petrified pebbles and cobbles. It's about 380 million years old. Wow. And it speaks to us of a time when that location was at the bottom of a towering mountain range that might have rivaled the Himalayas. And periodically, enormous storms unloaded upon that mountain range and Mount fierce mountain streams cascaded down canyons on the slopes of these mountains, carrying with them pebbles and cobbles, and then dumping it at the bottom of the mountain range, where it sat for 380 million years, waiting for you to come along and see it. Unbelievable! Like the, imag- <laughs> the imagination in my head right now. Um, I have been to Sunset Rock probably like five or six times, and you know. I have thought of this, but I haven't thought of this this deep. And God, I'm going to be like, let's go back and check it out once again. Um, (laughs) That that spot below Sunset Rock, um, when I see conglomerate, I just like the separations of the the rock in between Sunset Rock is absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Um, Once again, and then also uh, the glacial erratics. Alligator Rock, and there's another one right next to it. Those are glacial erratics, correct? Dinosaur Rock. Yep. Dinosaur rock and alligator rock. Everybody's seen alligator rock, but you have to know where to look to see uh, dinosaur rock. Now, once you're there, though, I want you to walk through those woods because you're going to count one, two, three, four, five. I don't know when it ends. All sorts of smaller erratics. I believe that that peninsula and that location is where the two glaciers collided with each other. And each glacier carried those boulders with it until they collided to create that that landscape and left behind all of those numerous boulders. You're talking about the um, the Labrador, correct? And the Wisconsin? Oh, uh, uh, this is the Wisconsin glaciation, uh, which affected the state of Wisconsin to a very great extent, but also affected us. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So once again, people are listening. Remember when you're standing at the, the these places to remember or to think of what happened during these glacial times. Ice was towering over these peaks, was was carving these peaks. Unbelievable stuff. Um, what is, uh, Dr. Titus, what is your favorite spot in the Catskills when you can capture the most glacial activities? Broadly North Lake. and uh, But we talked about that so much. Let me tell you another wonderful place. Uh, and many of your listeners have certainly been to the top of Vroman's Nose. Uh, there's a nice parking lot, and you get a choice of trails that take you to the top of Vroman's Nose. And when you get to the top, you stand upon this platform, this bedrock platform. You look down, and you see it's been polished by the sand carrying, carried by the glacier that passed across it, and then striated and then you stand at the edge of a cliff. When the glacier passed across Roman's nose, it stuck to the bedrock. And as the glacier moved to the south, it yanked or plucked a huge mass of rock out of the ground to leave that cliff behind. So you're standing not too close, but fairly close to the edge of that cliff on a surface that was glaciated, looking at a cliff that was yanked out of the ground by the passage of the ice. And then I want you to look into the valley below, which is flat. If you can, if you're there and they've been plowing the field uh, and you have a binoculars with you, you can look down and see that the soil down there has no cobbles or boulders in it. It's simply uh, silt and clay. It is the sediments at the bottom of a lake glacial lake Skoharie. Now, you're standing on the edge of that cliff. I want you to look down about 20 feet, and that's the level of the lake waters at the time it was a lake. 
the lake must have been about 600 feet deep. It extends up almost the top of the nose to the bottom of the valley. I want you to back up a step or two and look left and right, up the valley, down the valley. And in your mind's eye, I want you to fill that valley with ice water and look at the glacial lake that was once there. It is ho. <laughs> It is such a wonderful experience. I wrote an article about that for Catskill Life, and I got more letters from readers than any other article that we've ever, ever written uh, because people had no idea. They didn't know that in standing at the edge of that cliff, they were looking at a 600-foot deep lake. <laughs> exactly. And, um, you know, I've been to Bromantos several times. And, uh, you know, they, they used to call that, that place a dance floor, correct? That's right. That's right. Um, uh, I'm, is, it, is it where Indians used to perform rituals and stuff like that? I, I have, I'm completely unaware of anything of that sort. Uh, okay. I can't say yes or no. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I, I remember reading somewhere that Indians used to perform rituals there, but this place is a flat area. You can see graceful striations. You can see carvings from people back in the days. Um, you can see many, many things. Once again, uh, Dr. Titus describes it amazingly gratefully that you can see a massive lake that used to sit there. Where did it extend from? The Mohawk Valley all the way down to, to um, the Catterskill, correct? Or, um, all the way to uh, Lexington, I think, actually. Yeah, right through Prattsville. Uh, the uh, flat uh, valley floor just east of Prattsville is the bottom of that lake. Wow. Unbelievable. It gets better. Probably all of your listeners have been through Grand Gorge. And I want you to think about Grand Gorge. Uh, with the Route 30 climbs up the hill, passes through the gorge and on to Roxbury. When you get over the top and back down almost to Roxbury, stop, get out, look back at the gorge and in your mind's eye, see vast quantities of water pouring through that gorge, draining the lake that you and I have just been talking about. The lake that filled all of the Schoharie Creek Valley, uh, at least all the way up to of Roman's Nose, and then later all the way up to what's it, Delinson, I think. Uh, the whole Schoharie Creek Valley was draining through Grand Gorge. Imagine for a minute how powerful that flow of water was. What a strong, raging, foaming, pounding, thundering Ice Age stream that was once there. Exactly. And you can also picture this in the Notches area, correct? Yes. Like Stony Clove Notch, Jimmy Knoll, Dolan, Deep Notch. Each of those took its turn being the way water drained out of that lake. It carved those canyons through the mountain. In a very brief period of time, uh, almost a catastrophic event. But yeah, if you're familiar with Stony Clove, Deep Notch, Grand Gorge, and any oh, and Wagon Wheel Notch, yep. all of those are locations where glacial lakes were draining, and the flow of water was eroding the canyons that you see. Absolutely amazing. So once again, um, everybody, if if you, if you can picture yourself at the viewpoints of one of the peaks or even at the fire towers, just look around and see the glacial activity, the cirques, the big, huge bowls, the, the ones the glaciers flowed down through that and made mm -hmm. that bowl. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. Um, I, once again, I am amazed by this. I was brought on to, to, to this by you and by my friend, uh, James. Um, who I hike with so often, and he loves Cirques. So I guarantee he's he's read your books mm -hmm. in numerous amounts. Um, glacial erratics, you're, you're bushwhacking in the Catskills, and you see a massive boulder off to your side that was brought there by Glacier. Yep, certainly, yes. Uh, I have seen so many of those. Um, I love to bushwhack, and I, I spotted one. I don't know if I've ever sent this to you, Dr. Titus. Um, there was one off of the side of... Friday between Friday Mountain and Cornell that I saw that is the size 
of at least three houses. I'll have to send it to you. <laughs> could be, could be. Amazing stuff. I've never once been fascinated by glacial activities. I, I mean, I have been. That's that's. It's just it's a it's phenomenal. Um, once again, uh, check out his books, Doctor Titus, uh, the Catskills in the Ice Age, the Catskills, a geological guide, and the Catskill or the Hudson Valley in the Ice Age. Amazing stuff, and you will learn so much about the Catskills. You will learn a, an enormous amount of of energy that came from these glaciers and that flowed down through the north to the south and maybe some from the 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 west to the east and say that you will see the catskills as you never saw them before you see what's behind the landscape what created the landscape that we so cherish exactly you know i've had i've had debates of uh, with my friends online of where they were flowing you know what direction stuff like that you know it's it's absolutely fascinating to talk about that stuff in the Catskills, and you know, Doctor Titus, I'm so glad you could join me. I'm once again your your stuff, um, your books, your your writings fascinate me, and and it and it surprises me every day. Once you put out something new that I haven't known, mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh my god, this is amazing. Um, I think you <laughs> wrote you wrote something new on um, well, not new, a couple months ago about the. Um, the glacial tills in Albany, correct? Oh, golly. We write something about the glacial tills in Albany. We turn out so much stuff, we forget it. Maybe uh, slumps, maybe. Uh, uh, I don't think we, close. I don't think we, uh, I think somebody else might have written that particular. Uh, I don't recall doing the, we've done articles on the pine bush. Yes. And, but not recently. Uh, so now you got to let me get a plug in here for my facebook page our facebook page and uh, the catskill geologist the catskill geologist is our facebook page anybody who wants to can join and we announce uh things that we're doing articles that we've written and field trips uh, uh, we're going to lead and walks that we're going to go on and talks, and talks that we're giving and opportunities people have to come and see us and come and meet us. So I hope um, we'll get a, a flurry of people who've listened to your podcast uh, joining our Facebook page because we do really in, like very much meeting the people who read our articles. That That is correct. Once again, uh, the Catskill Geologist on Facebook. Yep. Check it out. A lot of people post up and ask questions and uh, Dr. Titus will give the answers on that. And it'll blow your mind once again. Um, the Catskill geologist, check out Dr. Titus's uh, books, The Catskills in the Ice Age. Phenomenal book will will open your mind about the Catskills. Uh, the Catskills, a geological guide, once again, will open your mind about the Catskills and you will see the Catskills differently. The Hudson Valley in the Ice Age, I still think that opens my mind about the Catskills because of how it was formed. And then what was your last book that I, I don't think I have that one yet? Oh, uh, you, 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 you. oh, the uh, the other side of time, which is an anthology. Uh, you know, you're writing too much when you can't even remember all the titles. <laughs> well, you you have done so much uh, uh, geology uh, subscriptions and stuff like that for the past how many years? We our fr- first article was 1991. Wow, article number one. Yeah, unbelievable. So once again. Thank you, Dr. Titus, for joining us. Yes, thank you so much. I'm, I'm so happy to have you here, and I, I don't think I'll be able to sleep tonight on this. <laughs> I hope you can. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I, I, got, I got your book right here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it when I go to bed. Hopefully, hopefully, it'll put me to sleep, but I highly doubt Wake it. Wake up screaming glaciers in the middle of the night, yes. <laughs> that's, that's what I want to do. I'm sorry. That's what I want to do, but... Um, once again, I'd like to thank our, our sponsors, Scenic Route Guiding. Thank you for everyone who listens, and thank you who the people that are subscribed to this. And I don't know how many times I'll do this. Thank you, Dr. Titus, for joining us tonight. I had a great time. I learned a lot. Hopefully, our our listeners will learn a lot, and they will purchase your books and learn even more. <laughs> because you just put so much into the Catskills, and uh, your information 
it's valuable and it's it's once again amazing to hear thank you stash have a good night tell johanna i said hi i will 